Hello everyone, my name is Megan Lavoda and I offer wisdom, tools, and support for personality integration. And today I'm going to be talking about the Jungian cognitive function, extroverted intuition. So this video concludes my series on the eight cognitive functions. If you're new to personality type, uh, the eight cognitive functions were first identified by Swiss psychologist Carl Jung in the 1920s in his book Psychological Types. There, since then, there have been many other theorists and analysts of Jungian uh, personality type. This has been popularized by things such as the MBTI test, as well as other online tests that have been even more popular over the past few years. So extroverted intuition is used as a dominant function from by the ENFP and the ENTP types and used as an auxiliary function by the INFP and INTP types. So first of all, I just wanna say that if you are an NE type, then I would suggest watching all of the videos on this or just making sure that you have an understanding of all of the cognitive functions because how extroverted intuition works is actually through seeing the patterns and the relationships between the ideas. And in order for you to really know what extroverted intuition is, you're gonna to need to compare it to extroverted sensing. And you're also gonna to need to compare it to introverted intuition. And if you're here because you got ENFP or ENTP, INTP or INFP on an online test, I just would say to consider the fact that you might actually be another type. I'm an ENFJ that has always tested as an ENFP, an ENFP on certain tests. But then the more I read about the cognitive functions, it is clear that I use extroverted feeling as my dominant and then introverted intuition as my secondary. So definitely keep an open mind. And as always, I recommend doing your own research here. Um, I've been studying type for about eight years now. I've read several books about it. And so really what I'm trying to do here with this series is just to chat with you guys and introduce what these functions are, how I've come to define them. And again, as with anything, take it all with a grain of salt. So let's get into extroverted intuition. The key word that I have come up with for extroverted intuition is that extroverted intuition seeks to imagine. That is directly contrary to how extroverted sensing seeks to impact reality. It's very hard to be imagining about reality while also impacting reality at the same time. One of those things is not better than the other, but it's important to realize the sort of relationship between the two. They're kind of two modes that your brain can be in. And extroverted intuitives are focused on imagining. They're focused on theorizing. And since extroverted intuition is a extroverted perceiving function, it is focused on all of the possibilities. Now let's get into that. What is a perceiving function? The two perceiving functions are sensing and intuition, whereas the two judging functions are feeling and thinking. Now of all four of those functions, those can be expressed in two different orientations or attitudes. It could be an extroverted attitude or an introverted attitude. So when you take the four functions and the two attitudes, you put that all together and you get eight cognitive functions. So extroverted intuition, it's a perceiving function that has an extroverted attitude and it's focused on intuition over sensing, which means it's focused on the abstract concepts rather than the tangible reality. So um, an extroverted attitude, it is focused on the objective rather than the subjective. Extroverted attitudes are focused on breadth over depth. Extroverted perceiving functions have a more wide perspective on things rather than how introverted functions are deeper, a little bit more precise, and a little bit more subjective and personal. They're connected to you as a subject. And I also just want to say that objective doesn't mean correct and subjective doesn't mean wrong. It is based on directly how you as a subject interact with it. We all have an outer world and an inner world and it's that balance that makes us human. So the way though that extroverted intuition focuses on things is with a wide lens. 
it is focused on all of the abstract concepts, all of the intuitive possibilities. It's focused on what could be more than what is. And so that um, is why I say that it seeks to imagine because I just did an extroverted sensing video that I would recommend taking a look at and sort of seeing the opposite in. This cup, for example, extroverted sensing wants to impact it. It thinks about what can this do? What could this do for me? What can I do to it to impact it? So extroverted intuition is not focused on that. It's focused on the possibilities around this that are not here. Extroverted sensing is focused on what is in the tangible reality. Extroverted intuition is not focused on what is. It's focused on what's not. It's focused on what could be, what might be, what they might like things to be. In a way, extrovert intuition can be kind of in a dream world, but there is a genius in that perspective as well. So I, I also want to just sort of compare to introverted intuition too, because there's, and again, I'm suggesting to look into that and watch the video, but just a taste of it is that introverted intuition might be focused on the singular pattern that um, they see, uh, the the kind of boiling down everything they see into a single concept where extroverted intuition kind of works like branches on a tree. Um, introvert, introverted intuition is taking the branches and focusing on the root of things, but extroverted intuition sees this root and they just naturally branch off of it. Everything that you see, extroverted intuition is naturally branching things off and connecting like puzzle pieces in your brain. Extroverted intuition is great at associations and great with wordplay. And in fact, they probably view a lot of concept as little buckets of associations. It's what I've noticed too with extroverted intuition is that you're never really just thinking about one thing. You're kind of thinking about five things at once. They're kind of seeing all of the different parallels like a layered on top of each other. And so that's why it's so hard to focus on just one thing in reality, the way that extroverted sensing is. Extrover extroverted intuition needs to know how, how does this connect to everything? And so that's why these people are great idea people, great at reading between the lines, um, but be careful that you aren't making too many assumptions because there might be a key detail that you're missing. What I've found is that extroverted intuitives like nine times out of 10, maybe that's a little too strong, maybe eight times out of 10, the assumptions that extroverted intuitives make are actually right. It, it's kind of scary, but be careful because that could also bite you in the ass because there might be times that you are disregarding reality and you're wrong. But extroverted intuition has this uncanny ability to pretty much understand reality without directly engaging in the tangible forms of reality. And it's, it's very, it's a very mystical function. Um, both of the intuitive functions are pretty mystical. But, um, you know, you can think of since introverted intuition is connected to extroverted sensing, it's kind of the root of all of the SE you see. It's the sort of inspiration that spurs action. Whereas extroverted intuition is a more wide perception of, it, it is in the moment, it's not in the moment with reality, but with every passing moment, it can create a brand new dream world, or a brand new um, rabbit hole for extroverted intuition to go down. Um, they, they like, introverted intuition likes to be in that phase where they are engaging with all of the ideas. They don't like to just pick one idea and go with it the way the introverted intuition does. They're always leaving room for new possibilities. And so these people who use strong um, extroverted intuition, it might be hard to pin them down. It might be hard to get them to commit to something, whether that be a relationship or a project. It might be hard for them to be consistent with things because they want to leave the door open. They want to leave the door open to imagination. So 
That's a little bit about extroverted intuition. That concludes my series on the eight cognitive functions. And if you have any questions about how these work, um, please let me know. And I also offer typing services, mentorship services, and lots of other fun links below. Um, if you're into this sort of content, please subscribe. And if you're an NE user, I'd like to know, does this resonate with you? Is there anything that doesn't resonate with you? And yeah, thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.